Hey! I was gonna say I didn't see you there, but this is a video and that's not how videos work. And that was supposed to be a segue into me talking about how I was flipping my phone. So if you're used to flipping your phone when you're bored like I am, then you might have noticed that it's really hard to flip a phone perfectly the way it's normally done without it tumbling. But flipping it stably in other ways is much easier. You probably think that's because you're not very good at flipping things. And that's true, but it's also because of this really cool thing called the Intermediate Axis Theorem. There's a set of equations that describe this, and you'll see a lot of this nice little letter called I. That's because at the core of this all is something we call moment of inertia. Well, you know what inertia is. It's essentially how hard or easy it is to move something that's not moving, or stop something that's in motion. Moment of inertia is just a fancy way of saying rotational inertia. In other words, how hard it is to move or stop something that's rotating or moving in a circle. That's why swinging my little sister is a lot easier than swinging 140 pounds of disappointment. The same thing applies to a phone being flipped. It has three principal axes of rotation, X, Y, and Z. Each one has a different moment of inertia, because each one has a different amount of mass spread out in its rotational circle. So, if you were to rotate the phone about its intermediate axis, which has the intermediate moment of inertia, you would need just the right amount of intermediate force to rotate it. And that is the axis of instability. To understand why, take a fidget spinner and spin it in three different ways. Now since this one has the most mass while rotating it with all its bearings, it has the highest moment of inertia, and it's stable. This one has the least mass while spinning with no bearings, so it has the least moment of inertia and it's super easy to spin. But if you spin the middle one with a weird intermediate amount of mass and moment of inertia, unfortunately the spinner can't explain the whole problem, because it doesn't account for different axes of rotation. Well, what about the human body? We can rotate on the z-axis just fine and same with the x-axis. But when you're rotating on the y-axis, essentially doing a cartwheel, you have to maintain a level of balance by putting in the perfect amount of velocity only in the forward direction. As soon as you move even a little bit from a straight path, you start to lose your balance, and that snowballs into you tumbling in all sorts of weird ways. The equations support this. If you solve the equation for the angular velocity in, let's say, the x-direction, you end up with a second derivative that proves an exponential relationship. That's just a really fancy way of saying that even a little angular velocity in a direction you don't want to rotate towards makes you exponentially start moving towards that direction. So yes, in theory, you can flip a phone stably about its intermediate axis, but it has to be a virtually perfect spin. See ya.